Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sword and Trial. Today, Graham and I welcome into the studio Aaron Gardner, who is one of the members here in Cape Coral of Grace Baptist Church. And Aaron has been on the forefront of standing for the life of unborn babies. He's been doing this for years. He's helped to uh, lead out in our own congregation and help other churches as well to specifically address in these days the proposed Amendment 4 which would amend the Florida Constitution regarding abortion. And that's important, not just for churches and people in Florida, but for all throughout the United States. We encourage you to listen in, find out what this is about, and pass this around, especially to people that you know who might be living in the state of Florida. Welcome to the Sword and Trial. The Sword and Trial is a podcast of Founders Ministries, and Founders exists for the recovery of the gospel and the reformation of local churches. And I'm Tom Askell. And I'm Graham Gundon. Delighted to have you join us today as we welcome into the studio Aaron Gardner, who is a member of Grace Baptist Church here in Cape Coral, where we serve as pastors. And Aaron has been very much involved in the issue of trying to protect unborn babies and keep them from being murdered Mm -hmm. and here in the state of florida we have now on the ballot that will be coming up in the fall an amendment that if it is passed will amend the constitution in florida and basically make abortion legal almost without any kind of limitations is that right aaron right that's right yeah why don't you tell us about this amendment four so that we can be educated on it and help educate others especially those that are in florida or have friends or relatives in florida yeah yeah so um i think one thing that'd be helpful is understanding some of the background of amendment four and how it got started and understanding like that this is the new tactic of the left to constitutionalized abortion throughout the United States. Um, Unfortunately, this isn't unique just to Florida, as we've already seen four states pass amendments since Roe uh, was overturned, um, most uniquely Ohio. Um, And then this year, we have six confirmed states that will have similar amendments uh, on their ballots this year with uh, five additional potential uh, states following suit. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was an amendment started by a group here in Florida uh, called Floridians Protecting Freedoms. And uh, (laughs) yeah. Everybody except the unborn babies. That's right. That's right. And so uh, they're heavily backed by various Planned Parenthood groups throughout the state of Florida, um, the ACLU, several key national Democratic leaders, um, and then also uh, George Soros funded um, uh, campaign fund. Mm -hmm. Um, so they started an aggressive uh, um, movement to get signatures starting somewhere around the fall of last year. And by January, they were able to achieve 900,000 signatures. Um, it went to the Supreme Court. Our Attorney General, Ashley Moody, she did fight to try to get this removed from our ballot. But unfortunately, uh, during this fight, I, we had this kind of mentality in our state that, you know, there's no way this gets through. With this, this is Florida. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that and that was the attitude of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And um, and so a lot of our conservative groups, our pro-life groups, they, they really didn't think this would move past the Supreme Court. And when they passed it in February, it took a lot of people off guard and put our groups on their heels. Mm. And, uh, now, when you say they pa- the Supreme Court passed it, you mean the Supreme Court allowed it to be put on the ballot. Right, That's right. Okay. right. So, yeah, so it, they allowed it to be on the ballot for this November. Mm. So, um, uh, and, and then from there, this yes to four group and this Floridians uh, protecting freedoms have just hit the ground running um, campaigning for this. Mm. I have heard that there has been documented tens of millions of dollars that has come into the state yeah. to promote the passing of Amendment 4. We're up to $32 million right 32 now. $32 million. Yeah. Isn't that wow. incredible? Yeah. President Biden has been here. Kamala yes. Harris has been here. Mm-hmm. Both uh, times when they were here were advocating for the yes. passing of this amendment. Yes. Why is this Why is this such a big deal in Florida? I mean, just just leave us alone. Why, why do we have yeah. these, uh, yeah. these uh, eyes of the nation on us and these leftists from the powers uh, center centers of power coming down here trying to advocate for this. Yeah, so I, I think Ohio was that was the testing the waters for can we get a purple state, you know, mm-hmm. one that's not too liberal but not too conservative. 
Uh, now in Florida, I think what we're doing is we're testing the waters to see, can we go after a conservative stronghold? Mm. I think that's why you have so much time, energy, and money being put in by these leftist groups to come after us. And, I mean, talking to even politicians, I know in some of our southeastern states, our more conservative states, there is a concern that if this passes in Florida, it's going to be a full-on assault mm. um, throughout the rest of our conservative uh, yeah. states. That makes sense because uh, what has happened under Governor DeSantis is we've gone from a uh, more Democrat registered voters in Florida to now an overwhelmingly large percentage mm-hmm. majority of Republican voters. And uh, again, the Republican Party is not sacrosanct and this doesn't right. uh, mean that they do everything right. But in terms of issues of social concern, they're going to be closer to what's right than the Democrat Party. So, yeah, if they can win this in Florida, then it's like uh, open season yeah. everywhere mm-hmm. else. So even if you're not in Florida, you ought to be concerned about this. Right. You ought to want to see this stopped here so that we can gain momentum to see it stopped elsewhere. Th- this, raises, this raises a question about the post-Roe world mm-hmm. we're in mm-hmm. and strategies. I think a lot of pro-life folks thought, oh, man, Roe v. Wade's been overturned. Yeah. No more abortion. Yeah. In America. Mm. I mean, that's wrong on multiple levels, yeah. but we're seeing it play out here. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if we can be successful in Florida in stopping this, I mean, that's a shot across the bow of the pro boards and the left. But it is interesting. I mean, I think we so many people have said since Roe was overturned that we weren't the pro life movement wasn't ready for Roe to be overturned. Mm-hmm. And I think that's I think that's right. I mean, the left has gained so much traction since Roe was overturned mm-hmm. and um, across multiple different states. I, I, I don't know the numbers. I don't know that anyone really knows the numbers. Maybe you can correct me on that, Aaron. I, but I think that we, there's some reason to believe that there's been some dip in the number of abortions since Roe has been overturned, uh, a minute amount. But legally, I mean, the, the left keeps racking up win after win in mm-hmm. these different states. And even in the states that we consider to be uh, abortion-free, where it's illegal to have an abortion, I mean, yeah, it may be criminal for a doctor to perform abortion, but, you know, mothers can still kill their babies mm-hmm. using um, abortion pills, uh, right. and they're totally um, freely, and that's that's not illegal. So, yeah, we, we uh, I think we're resting on our laurels, and we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. I read, uh, I think it was Texas, that the number of the abortion pills that have been ordered and sent into the state of Texas skyrocketed. That it yeah. went way up. Yeah. And so there's some that are thinking we may be actually having more abortions now mm, uh, yeah. that the uh, publicity is so much on the privacy of it and what you can do in your own home with nobody else knowing about it. Whereas there was at least something, you know, if you had to mm-hmm. go to a clinic and you might be met with people like Aaron and others yeah. saying, please don't kill your baby, um, that the social stigma may have been dropped even more. Mm-hmm, post yeah. row. But we're, we're in a mess in our nation, and, and some states, like Florida, mm-hmm. had this trigger law uh, so that when Roe was overturned, the law went on the books, I think, for like a heartbeat bill right. or six-week right. bill or something like that. And, and, you know, praise God for that, but mm-hmm. that still means that babies are being murdered up until that point. Yeah. And those of us who fear God, who have the Bible— who believe that thou shalt not murder applies to people Mm -hmm. who have not yet made it through the the birth canal. Uh, We can't be duped and we must not allow ourselves to be just lulled to sleep on these issues. I I don't know how many people I've seen saying, praise God, there's no more abortions in uh, our state. I mean, we we saw it even with, you know, Doug Wilson the other day on a podcast saying that there have only been six abortions in Idaho. Mm. You know, since uh, Roe yeah. v. Wade was overturned or something like that, or maybe this year. And it's like, that's naive. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just yeah. crazy naive to mm-hmm. think that way. Yeah. So, Aaron, give us the text. What What is actually said in Amendment 4? Do you have it in front of you? Yeah, yeah. So the ballot summary uh, reads, No law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability or when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. This amendment does not change the legislature's constitutional authority to require notification to a parent or guardian before a minor has an abortion. Hmm. So, you know, it seems pretty basic, you know, generic. Um, before but, viability. Yeah. What's yeah. viability? Exactly. That's that, And that's the problem. You know, um, as, as I said earlier, 
one of the things that we've traditionally seen in amendments is usually there's pages of uh, definitions, even for just the most basic term mm-hmm. when we've had different amendments come through in our history. But this one has none. You go to the website of the group that started this, there's no definitions provided. So, you know, for some people, viability is conception. For mm-hmm. some, it's when there's a heartbeat detected. Some, it's the end of the first trimester, end of the second, you know. And for some of these groups that are even supporting this amendment, it's up to birth. Yeah. So um, this is one of the things that our attorney general was pushing was that uh, what you know, what is their definition? How can we have something on the ballot when we don't even know what they're voting for? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, our Supreme Court said, well, um, I think Floridians are smart enough to figure this out for themselves. But, I appreciate the confidence, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not quite so confident. But it's misplaced. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Sword and the Trial. I wanted to make you aware of a new title that Founders Press is putting out. It's called As the Darkness Clears Away by Tom Askell. It's a collection of Christmas devotionals for the Christmas season, and we're selling it right now. It's pre-sale through November 15th. Go on press.founders.org to check it out. Grab a copy for yourself. Uh, you'll be greatly encouraged uh, by this Christmas devotional. It is full of pastoral wisdom, practical application, Uh, It's got a beautiful cover, so go to press.founders.org. You know, even when we've talked to some of their apologists, you know, when we've gone out to different events and everything, you can meet, you know the people that have been reached by this Yes to Four group, and you can hear it by the quick little elevator speech that they give you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times, well, you're crazy. You know, we, nobody wants nine month abortions. We just want to go back to row. And, you know, they, they use this word viability as a marketing term to go back to um, the days of row. We just want 24 weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you haven't defined anything and, you know, George Soros groups, um, Planned Parenthood, they've all been open. They're okay with nine month abortions. We've seen similar, you know, state amendments go forward. Um, where they've tried to push this in the past. So this isn't unheard of um, Mm -hmm. to have abortions up to birth. And it's crazy, you know, we just, we just want to go back to 24 weeks. (laughs) I mean, like (laughs) babies have been delivered and have survived at 21 weeks. So you're, you're talking about killing babies that could very well survive out of the womb. So you're saying they're not viable. It's yeah. Yeah. One of the things too, that we need to open our eyes uh, to those in the pro-life world is that the other side, they know it's a baby. Mm -hmm. 40 years ago, you know, there were arguments about that. Are we talking Mm -hmm. about a human being or an embryo Mm -hmm. or a fetus? You know, that everybody knows it's a baby. The other Mm -hmm. side knows it's a baby. There Mm -hmm. there are now religious rituals being prescribed for women before they go into abortuaries Mm -hmm. that uh, they can set themselves apart, that they can be sanctified for this removal of life from their body. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is pure paganism. This is child sacrifice. Moloch has nothing Mm -hmm. on modern America. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if we're not going to see it like that, then we're not going to be motivated to respond the way we ought to respond. Yeah. Well, I think Moloch is the god of modern America, so I think he's the same same demon that they were worshiping in Canaan back in those days is the same mm-hmm. demon we worship today. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the argument is no longer, well, it's just a clump of cells, and I can remove a clump of cells that's a part of my body anyway, because nobody believes that, like you say, it's a baby. The argument is... Um, I have a right to my own bodily autonomy and nobody else uh, can trump that. And, you know, this baby is an alien invader and I did not consent to have this baby in me, which definitely is very arguable. I didn't consent to have this baby in me and therefore somebody's rights are going to have to be taken and they're not going to be my rights because I'm a fully functioning um, uh, adult human being. So the baby's rights are lesser than my own rights. And so the baby's life has to be taken. That's, that's the argument. And, and people are being very honest about it today. Yeah. 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 It is the supremacy of the individual and, uh, the idolatry of the self. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are, we're faced with it in now, uh, increasing ways where you, you have on the ballot of arguably the most conservative state in the nation, yeah. this amendment that if it's passed will make abortion available to anyone at any time for any reason Mm -hmm. that can be determined by an abortion clinic employee. 
yeah. you know, that you know, here's a healthcare professional. Yeah. Well, what qualifies you? Well, I got a minimum wage paying job. That's right. You know, yeah. at an abortion or abortion clinic, and I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, you need this. And, and you know, you bring that up. You know, that's another part of, uh, of this where they haven't defined terms when it starts talking about health as determined by a healthcare provider. Mm-hmm. You look at Florida statutes now: uh, a chiropractor, a personal trainer, an acupuncturist. You know, there's a wide list of what's considered a healthcare provider mm. that is now allowed to determine how mentally or physically fit a woman is to have an abortion mm. up to any point. And again, we're not defining health. So how severe does this health have to, does her physical or mental state have to be before she can go through with this? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just deception all the way through. And then on top of that, one of the things that the attorney general's office pointed out too, with this healthcare uh, language that they've put in here, we could be looking at taxpayer funded abortions. They're, they're fully expecting if this gets through by next year, they'll have it in the courts to push for taxpayer funded abortions in the state of Florida. Mm. Wow. And this also, this, this amendment would allow minors mm-hmm. to have abortions without yeah. parental consent. Yeah. I, and you know, when we've talked to people out in the street, well, they, they said, well, no, that's wrong. You know, it has this whole section about a parent or a guardian, um, in the abortion process. Well, we currently have a statute that requires that a parent consent before a minor goes through with an abortion. Mm-hmm. Um, all this says is that the parent or guardian has to be notified. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've now allowed the only medical procedure that a minor can do without the consent of a parent mm. is the taking of their own child. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. It's very deceptive language. Yeah. Very yeah. De- notified, not can provide consent. Yeah. Yeah. So, Aaron, what are you doing? I mean, you, you have been kind of the point of the spear uh, mm-hmm. in our circles for mm-hmm. trying to address these issues and rally the troops, so to speak. So mm-hmm. what what have you been doing personally mm-hmm. and what would you encourage others uh, to do? What can people do to help educate and then uh, stand against this amendment being passed? Yeah. So the big thing is we've got to get past this idea that, you know, we're conservatives, we're automatically going to vote no. Um, you know, we've got to get past this idea that everyone knows about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've been told by several uh, influential people, at least in our area, that run conservative campaigns that, you know, this is a waste of time to start the education process this early. And, um, you know, some of the things we've been doing is uh, Byron Donalds, our local congressman, um, he had a town hall in the Cape uh, back in June. So me and a group, we went out there, we handed out information, just bringing awareness. And there was over 700 people at this event. And uh, right before it ended, we just went outside the entrances and we just handed out information. And I would say 70% of the people that we talked to had no idea Mm -hmm. that this was even going on. And you know, this is supposed to be the informed people in our group and completely clueless. And then, you know, one of the things also that we're seeing is that there is confusion for some people that think this is actually a pro-life amendment. Yeah. Um, at that same meeting, we met a woman who was very distraught that we were out there handing out information against no. And it wasn't a Democrat. It, it was a Republican. And she's like, no, you don't understand. This is, a, this is a pro-life amendment. And after going back and forth, she finally even went as far to say, I went and got signatures to get this thing on the ballot. Oh, man. She said... I know that it took someone outside of our group to come correct this woman to finally get her to realize that yeah. what she had done. Yeah. Um, and, and this is the problem that we're dealing with. And it's not just that. We've gone to uh, several events um, throughout South Florida. Um, so during Fourth of July, when a lot of the Freedom Fests and a lot of the Fourth of July um, parades went through, we just went outside. Um, we tried getting booths, and where we weren't able to get one, we just went outside and started handing out information. So. Um, and, and it doesn't take many. Like when we went to Punta Gorda's uh, Freedom Fest, there was only three of us that were able to go. Um, we were able to reach hundreds of people. We had signs all throughout. Um, we were, RFK even had a booth there, and we outpaced him and his group. So, mm. I mean, all that to say, you know, it doesn't take yeah. a lot. But um, we also went to Cape Boom that had over 30,000 people in attendance. Um, and we had a pretty large group from our church and some people from out of state that came down and helped us. And, um, we were able to reach close to 4,000 people one-on-one um, just by standing out there. And then all the people that were walking by, you know, just bringing mm-hmm. awareness with the signs and, um, you know, just calling out to them as they're walking. So um, we, we've also uh, tried going um, to local conservative um, 
or, or, or events for our local politicians in the area, um, trying to exhort them to use their platform to speak out against this. Um, uh, we've seen where uh, Collier County, our sister county to the south, um, they have recently come out, their commissioners yeah. came out and condemned uh, Amendment 4, um, and we're looking to do the same thing here in Lee. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to get word out. Um, we even went to... Uh, uh, Donald Trump's rally that he had in Miami a couple weeks ago. And that one was really eye-opening to a lot of us in our group um, to how far we've shifted. While it was still a minority that was sitting there and telling us, you know, uh, you know, abortion's a societal good. It's necessary for our state. Um, it was still a scary number of yeah. people in the conservative movement that have mm. gotten on board with this agenda. Mm. And even when you explain to them that it's up to nine months, that, that doesn't seem to have any effect on them. Right. Um, and again, this, this was back in July. We're still seeing that a lot of people in our state are unaware mm. that this is going place while Planned Parenthood, yes to four Floridians protecting freedoms are out phone banking, door knocking, they're showing up to their events and they're getting the word out. Mm. Um, so what we're seeing is there's a big issue with education and awareness. And that's been our big um, our, our, our big mission right now is just trying to get people exposed to what's going on, as well as um, uh, start reaching out to churches and pastors and exhorting them to use their platform in their church um, to, to raise awareness, not just with their congregants, but to exhort them to go out into their communities as well. Have you been met by uh, pastors and churches? Uh, not very well. Really? Yeah. Um, a, a lot of them don't want to speak out on this issue. Uh, the 501c3 is a big one. Oh, it, gosh. It, it's a big stumbling block for a lot. Um, now, we have met some pastors that have, you know, they're all on board and they're mm. they're ready to go and help you know, mm -hmm. however they can, but um, it's not the majority. I want to invite you to join us January 23rd through 25th, 2025, here in Southwest Florida for the National Founders Conference on the theme of revival. Our cry those few days together will be revive us, O Lord. And we've invited speakers in to address this issue historically, theologically, biblically, practically. And we think that it will be one of the most important conferences that we have ever held. It will be the same week after the inauguration of the next president of the United States. And we should be reminded at that time that in and through everything else that is going on in this nation, what we desperately need more than anything is for God to come by his spirit and revive his work in the midst of these years. So go to founders.org and find out more information about this vitally important conference and sign up, come with your friends, your family. We would love to see you here in Southwest Florida in January, 2025. I think that uh, threat of losing your tax exempt status has been used as a club mm -hmm. and as a ghost. You yeah. know, really, it's there's the, <laughs> this is a moral issue. You know, right. we're not talking about some kind of um, question about uh, armament of nuclear weapons or something. We're right. talking about life. We're talking right. about children. We're talking about the sixth commandment. Mm -hmm. And if churches can't speak out on this, then. Uh, they ought to just fold up shop because there's not much else that they're going to feel emboldened to speak out on. Yeah. And churches can speak on this issue without Absolutely. threat of losing their tax exempt status. I mean, that just needs, churches need to realize that that's something that they can do. And even if they couldn't, they should speak out on it anyway. Right. Well, and you know, one thing we've noticed too is the Catholics don't have a problem speaking out on this issue. Mm -hmm. they, they're not worried about their 501c3. And from what I can tell, they're not losing it either. Mm hmm so um, I, I think that is, you know, a horrible testimony to the church of Florida and of yeah. America right there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a, 
we need to realize that this is not a, a political issue. Mm-hmm. There's, there's politics involved, mm-hmm. but this is a moral, spiritual issue. Yeah. And so as churches, we approach this differently than you would if you were a political action right. committee. You know, you'd right. look for the most politically expedient way forward right. on that. Well, we've got to think like Christians, and so we need to have a theology of this. And mm-hmm. you know, as I think about, okay, what's my theology of this? Well, the Sixth Commandment starts right there. Right. You shall right. not murder. Yeah. So anything that legalizes murder i got to be against if I'm going to honor the God of the Bible. But also I'm told to love my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so what does love look like Mm -hmm. for the unborn neighbor? Well, it looks like keeping him from being murdered. What does love look like for the one who wants to murder my unborn neighbor? Mm -hmm. To love that person, I need to keep that person Mm -hmm. from committing murder and therefore sinning against God and taking away uh, the life of an image bearer Mm -hmm. of God. Uh, these these things are not that complicated whenever you start stripping them down to basic biblical fundamental realities. We're told in 1 Timothy 2 to pray for kings mm-hmm. and those in authority mm-hmm. so that we might live quiet and peaceful mm-hmm. lives in godliness with dignity. Okay, we're to pray for that. And, and so I mean, we have prayed against Amendment 4. We've asked God publicly in our congregation to cause this amendment to fail. Uh, and we have uh, a monthly time of prayer and fasting. One day a month, our church is set aside to pray and fast for Reformation and revival, that things like this might mm-hmm. be overturned and that God will do what only he can do to come and restore our nation. We don't think if Amendment 4 doesn't get passed, a nation is suddenly going to be restored or Florida is going to be restored. Not at all. But if we're to pray for these things, shouldn't we try to work for them? Right. You know, why should I pray that God will give me a quiet and peaceful life and that uh, my neighbor might be well cared for and not work for that in right. the realm where God's given me opportunity to work. And I think that especially pastors, we need to get this more and more and, and unleash our people, you know, help them to get free from whatever has shackled them to think, oh, no, if I do this and I'm just being, you know, a political uh, wonk or hack yeah. and I'm, I'm forgetting my spiritual responsibility. No, this is part of what it means to be devoted to Jesus Christ. This is part of what your piety mm-hmm. ought to look like as it's being expressed. Right. The, um, the governor's office has um, scheduled, you know, by weekly calls with different faith leaders in the state, and they've been doing a lot to uh, try to get the word out about this, um, although I've not seen any public statements by Governor DeSantis himself. Um, I think that they're raising funds to fight um, Amendment 4 as well. Um, but other than perhaps the governor's office, I mean, how has it gone when you reached out to other Republican politicians? Have they been uh, a help to you, or have they just kind of been standoffish? Uh, uh, there's a lot of pandering that goes on. Um, you know, hey, this is great that you're doing this, uh, but I don't want to touch that. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's been... Uh, a majority of the attitude. Um, uh, you know, we, we've been able to talk to not just some of our local politicians, but we've even been able to, to reach some of our senators. Um, we were able to talk to uh, Rick Scott, and while him and his campaign manager were very complimentary of what we're doing, there's such a fear to come out on this issue, especially at a federal level, mm-hmm. or if you're a ladder climber within the Republican Party, mm-hmm. that they will not touch this life issue. Um, some of the county um, commissioners that we've tried reaching out to, uh, it's, it's more been the ones that are currently running right now. Um, they don't want to open publicly say anything. Well, you know, this doesn't have anything to do with the county level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so there hasn't been a whole lot of help. Um, we've tried talking to Byron Donald's campaign several times. We've been able to talk to several people within his campaign and even his campaign manager, and we cannot get them. You, you know, the response to us, well, that's a state issue. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, the federal level. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's no one's responsibility, apparently. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. But it doesn't stop the federal Democrats from coming into our state. Right. Like you mentioned earlier, uh, um, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been here twice already mm. speaking about this. Um, even Byron Donald's uh, uh, opponent, I, I don't recall her name, but she's shown up to some of these Meet the Candidate events we've been at. And she has no problem promoting Amendment 4 at mm. these events. So it doesn't stop the other side from speaking on this. Um, but uh, we have been able to meet a few that are being very open and helping educate um, those, with, especially within the Republican Party. Um, one of our local House representatives, uh, 
Jenna Pearson's Maleka. Mm-hmm. Um, she's been very outspoken against Amendment 4 and trying mm-hmm. to go around and educate. So we have met some people that are uh, very uh, helpful within this fight, but it, it, a, a lot of it, it, like I said before, is a lot of pandering mm-hmm. and um, just apathy mm-hmm. when it comes to this. Well, this speaks to, I think, an overall frustration that evangelicals have with Republican politicians. It's like the the left, the Democrats, the pro aborts they've they've they're they're going for the jugular on this issue. They're gonna they're gonna fight as hard as they can on the abortion issue. And Republicans, as soon as they see the abortion issue, they're gonna drop their we- weapons and run. Uh, yeah. And so so what do we do? You know, I mean, when it comes to abortion at the political level, we need to enact policies to stop the murder of the, our unborn children. Mm-hmm. But our people who have been elected to enact the policies are running away from the fight. So right. what do evangelicals? What do conservatives mm-hmm. do about that? They get in office. Yeah. And I, again, I would say to pastors and us here in our own church, we need to be talking to men about uh, being willing to enter the fray at a political level if God's given them grace and the strength and the gifts to do so. And I, I believe probably more of our people have that mm-hmm. than what we have tapped so far because we just we haven't been thinking rightly about the way faith intersects with politics the way theology informs politics Mm -hmm. i mean i can hear it now you know i can't believe you guys have just uh become a political action committee you know you're just (laughs) nothing but just a shill for the republican party or whatever and i just want to assure everyone that's certainly not the case we're willing to criticize any immoral action no matter who commits it republican democrat independent doesn't matter but also to recognize that this is a part of our mission Right. I mean, so, Graham, as a pastor, what do you say to uh, fellow pastors or to serious Christians who say, but, brother, we have a great commission, and how in the world does this fit in with the great commission? I mean, I won't this detract from the great commission? Well, I, there's a lot of things that one could say to that. First off is, you know, the great commission is not the only command that our Lord gave to us. He also mm-hmm. said, go and be salt and light. Uh, we are to have a preserving effect in this world. We are to push the darkness back and bring light in. And p- what, part of what that means is to um, keep our children from being murdered yeah. uh, by murderers. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we have a responsibility to do that. Second, um, the gospel can go forward in a much more effective way in, in a society that actually operates the way it's supposed to operate. Mm-hmm. Um, laws, even social laws, social mores, and um, laws that are put forward by um, governing entities can be a teacher to us, can be mm-hmm. a teacher to society. You know, this goes all the way back to Aristotle. Part of the duty of people who are in a place of authority is to educate their citizenry in virtue. A- and Christians have a wonderful opportunity to be able to educate the citizenry in virtue, in the law of God, mm-hmm. and therefore then be able to show them, you know, you you can't fully be obedient to the law of God. You, yeah. you stand condemned before the Lord, but there is a gospel. There, the, the Lord does give us grace and offers forgiveness to those who repent and trust in Christ. Yeah, that's well put. Well put. I also think about, okay, well, let's talk about the Great Commission in its fullness. You go and you make disciples and you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't stop there. Right. Teach them to observe mm-hmm. all things I have commanded you. Mm-hmm. Well, thou shalt not murder. Yeah. Let's observe it. And you you need to teach God's people to not simply not be murderers themselves, but to promote life as that commandment has embedded within it that we ought to do. What does that look like? Well, in a constitutional republic, it looks like you can vote for the right people. It looks like you can yourself perhaps run for an office where you Mm -hmm. can promote that. You can support the ones who hold the magisterial responsibilities in the civil society who support that. And you can stand against the ones who mm-hmm. want to overthrow that and want to allow murder for any and all reasons. So, yeah, I, a, a right political theology will not look at this and say, oh, man, you know, that's just a bunch of politics and the church is getting wrapped up in politics and uh, you need to avoid that. We ought to be about the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. Amen. Let's be about the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. Let's be salt and light. Let's do what God's called us to do. And when these kinds of wicked proposals come to society, uh, if we don't speak for God, who will? Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody's got to yep. speak for God, right. and God has called his people to do that. Mm-hmm. Could I add, too, to the, what you're saying right there, Leviticus 20? I, I think there's a moral principle there where 
God told the children of Israel that they were not to turn their children over to Moloch right. in Moloch worship. And he doesn't just stop there. And he said those people were to be cut off that offered mm-hmm. their children over as a sacrifice. But he doesn't stop it there. He says not just them, but literally translated, the one that turns the blind eye, I hold mm-hmm. equally responsible and he's to be cut off from my people. Mm-hmm. Now, that one was convicting to me yeah. when it comes to just this whole issue. But, you know, like in, in uh, Ohio, we, I just heard on this last call, over 50% of Christians in Ohio weren't yeah. even registered to vote. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And that's yeah. a turning of the blind eye. Yeah. That's, that's not being a voice for, yeah. those, for those children. He who knows to do right and doesn't do it is sin for mm-hmm. him. And we need to take that to heart. Well, Aaron, thank you so much yeah. for joining us today. Yeah. Man, we appreciate what you're doing. Uh, you've rallied folks in our church and beyond our church. And uh, there are probably some people who will be awakened to this in their states or here in Florida or no people in Florida that would like to get more information. Would you be willing for people to contact us and us put them in touch with you Absolutely. so that you can kind of help them along with things that you've learned and uh, resources that you have available, you know where they are? Would you be willing for that? Absolutely. I'd love to. Okay. Well, good. Well, if you have questions about this Amendment 4 in Florida or what's going on in your locale or your state, then uh, contact us. We'll put you in touch with Aaron. And if you're not in Florida and you think, well, what's Amendment 4 have to do with me? Well, it has a lot to do with you because if Florida falls on this issue, it will come to your state as well. And if you know people in Florida, please send this episode to them, encourage them to listen in, uh, to learn what's going on. And we want to be as helpful as we can be. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of The Sword and Trowel. As always, we appreciate our Founders Alliance members who support us, enabling us to produce this kind of content. We can serve you in any way at Founders. Please don't hesitate to reach out.